oke okay, nah dan dan tentu terus digaungan This is the mission objectives panel. This screen displays the locations and details of each objective you are given during the course of a mission. When a new objective appears, a flag will sometimes be placed on the map to indicate the area where the objective can be completed. Information about an objective will always appear first in this dialog box. Left click the close button to continue. Place your mouse cursor over the flag that has just appeared and notice how the text on the oh, right hand side of the screen becomes highlighted. This is the objective that is associated with this flag. Yeah. If right you right. place your mouse cursor over the flag yeah. long enough, a helpful tooltip will appear that explains the objective in greater detail. Tooltips offer useful information about almost any object found in the game and can be accessed just by hovering your cursor over anything you see. This screen also offers other useful information about your current mission. Located below your objectives is the information button. Click it. Clicking the briefing button will display the introductory mission briefing text. The history button provides historical background relative to the current mission, and the hints button provides clues about the best way to accomplish your objectives if ever you become stuck. You can also pause and unpause the game at any time by pressing shift pause. Now press the close button and press the tab key to exit this screen. You can also get helpful information about every aspect of Empire Earth 2 by opening up the Empire Earth Encyclopedia. Go ahead and open it now by clicking on the icon in the upper right part of the screen. From here you can gain detailed information about any part of the game just by clicking the related topic on the left side of the screen. Feel free to return to browse through the topics as long as you'd like. When you are ready to continue with this tutorial, close the encyclopedia by clicking the large X at the bottom of the screen. By going into the Empire Earth Encyclopedia, you have also accomplished an objective. At any point during this scenario, if you are unsure what to do next, you can check your current objectives by going back to the Mission Objectives panel. Left-clicking the Objectives button located in the right epic display in the top of the screen will take you there. The Objectives button looks like a flag and flashes whenever your mission objectives are updated. You can also call up previous text messages or voiceovers by pressing the H key. Check your updated mission objectives now by selecting the icon or pressing Alt-O. Your next objective is to select a citizen, so let's go back to the main screen now. Press the tab key to exit this screen. Now, please select one of your citizens by left-clicking on a unit in the middle of the screen. Good. Now look at the information provided in the unit information panel located in the bottom center-right portion of your screen. The panel will provide valuable information such as hit points, attack rating, range and speed on any currently selected object. It will also display the unit's current loyalty rating which is its resistance to being converted by enemy priests. The panel to the left of this one is the unit action panel. This lists all the abilities available to the selected object, including construction options, behaviors, special actions, and special powers. There are also other ways to select units besides left clicking on them individually. You may also hold down the shift key while clicking on different units to select a group. Other ways of selecting groups include holding down the left mouse button and dragging diagonally across the group to create a selection box. Releasing the button selects the units in the box. You may also double click on a certain type of unit to select all units of that type on screen. Experiment with this now. Now, with your citizens selected, right click near the rocks on the screen. Good. That is the most common method for issuing a movement command in the game. Another method is to use the mini-map, located in the lower left corner of your screen. The mini-map is a top-down view of the entire play area of your current game. Black areas are places about which you have no knowledge, while dim areas are areas you have been but have no current information about. Lightly lit areas are those places within your line of sight. Left clicking on a position on the mini map will shift your main view to that location. 
With your citizen selected, right click on the minimap where a signal flare has just been placed to tell them to move there. Signal flares are used to attract your attention to important events. Sometimes it means you are under attack, and other times, like now, it is related to an objective. As your units move out, you can scroll the screen to follow them by pushing the mouse cursor to any edge of the screen or by using the arrow keys. One of the most important aspects of Empire Earth 2 is the cycle of seasons. In snow or rain, your units will move slower and their sight range will be reduced. Although every unit on the map is affected by adverse weather conditions, moving units over long distances and exploring or invading another player's territory is much easier in summer or fall. Your citizens have arrived at an excellent location to build your first city. There are abundant resources nearby and plenty of room to build structures. With one citizen selected, left click on the Build Civilian Structures icon in the Unit Action panel and select the City Center icon. Now, move the mouse cursor near the trees. Notice how the ghost of the City Center replaces the cursor. If you move the ghost over trees or resources or other objects, the ghost turns red, which means this building cannot be built here. One or more icons indicating what the problem with the building placement is will also show up over the building ghost in this case. And the tooltip on the right side of the screen explains the exact reason. If you move the cursor over empty terrain that is mostly flat, it turns green, which means the site is suitable for construction. Move the ghost close to the trees and other resources and left click when it is green. Your citizen will begin construction at that location. You may select additional citizens and order them to help with the construction by right clicking on the site. When you have finished construction, select your city center. You can produce new citizens from your city center by left clicking the citizen button in the action panel. Each citizen costs a certain amount of food. You can quickly check on how much food you currently have, as well as your stockpile of other resources, by looking at the icons at the bottom of the screen near the object information panel. From top to bottom, they are location, territories, technology points, food, wood, stone, and gold. There are also two slots for special resources, but in this tutorial, we'll just be talking about the basic resources of food, wood, stone, and gold, which are essential in constructing buildings and buildings. The other resources will be covered in another tutorial. Produce as many citizens as your food stockpile will allow by clicking rapidly on the citizen icon. This queues up the production order for your convenience. Ok, stone hay đồ đá hay nè Alternatively, you could order one or more citizens and then hit the cycle production button so that this building will keep producing what you initially ordered as long as there are resources for it. Each citizen that is produced contributes one point for your current population level. Some units contribute more than one point. When you reach your maximum population capacity, you will be unable to build more units until you expand. You expand by building more city centers and houses. As your citizens are produced, you can order them to collect more food from the nearby forage bush and gold from the nearby gold pile by selecting them and right-clicking on the appropriate resource. Citizens are the only units that can gather resources. They will gather as much as they can from that resource pile and carry it back to the nearest city center or warehouse that you own. Alternatively, you can select the Set Rally Point icon in the action panel of your city center and then left click on a nearby resource. Your citizens will now begin to harvest that resource as soon as they are produced. Additionally, you can find and select idle citizens in order to give them tasks by clicking the Idle Citizen button, located second from the left, under the minimap. As a further shortcut to this, you can assign citizens to resources in a very general way, just by clicking on a resource in your resource stockpile display in the lower central portion of your screen. Right-click to pick up a citizen from that resource, and left-click to assign an idle citizen to it. Now, whether 100 food, 
100 stone, 100 wood, and 100 gold. Excellent. Now select your city center again and produce a scout. Order your scout to explore the area by selecting him and left clicking the explore button in his action panel. Units on explore will try to reveal as much of the map as they can to the exclusion of any other task. This means they won't respond when attacked. So be careful who you choose to send out a score. Uh, you can also no. choose to send a unit on a search and destroy mission. This setting also sends a unit to explore the map, except it makes the unit immediately engage the first hostile unit it sees until either one is dead. More powerful units than the scout are usually tasked with search and destroy. <coughs> The last lesson of this tutorial is about how garrisoning can improve your resource collection efforts. Select your city center and then right click on it. Garrison of city and like that. Note the rally flag is now on the building. This means that any citizen produced here will automatically garrison the building. The garrison display in the building's information panel shows you how many units are currently inside and the maximum number that can be garrisoned. Clicking on this will bring up a panel that shows what units are currently stationed there. Build a citizen now or select one of your other citizens and have it garrison the city center by pressing the G key and left clicking the building. The information panel on the city center has now changed to show the new garrison level. As a result of garrisoning, all resources dropped off at the city center will have a percentage bonus applied to them as they enter your stockpile. The greater the garrison level, the greater the bonus. Congratulations on completing the first tutorial. The Aztecs have made their home and claimed their territory. They are well on their way to building a lasting empire that will be known for its wealth, culture, and power. Congratulations on finishing the first Empire Earth 2 tutorial. Congratulations.